Today we're going to take a portrait it was taken in the studio on a white cyclorama. It looks a bit dull and gray in the background, and we're going to use Luminar AI to add some color and life to the photograph. Hi, my name is William Beam. I'm a portrait photographer in Central Florida. If you haven't been here before, welcome. We try to help people out with visual storytelling and also working on their post-processing. The visual storytelling part is something we discuss on the podcast quite a bit. If you take a look in the description below, you'll see a link to the podcast. Also, there are several coupon codes and discounts for some of the products and services that I use. So please go ahead and check that out. Today, we've got a photograph of a young woman who's kind of jumping in the air, but the background and environment is just really lifeless and dead. So we're going to see if we can't get Luminar AI to do something to help us out with that. All right, the first thing you notice is our portrait is going in the wrong orientation. And it's just the way that it loaded in here. So I think what we want to do is we want to come over here to Composition AI. And I'm going to leave this in the original aspect ratio, but I need to flip this around. So we're going to go ahead and click on rotate and flip. And then the next thing we're going to look at is just all this dead space. There's a couple of things that you'll see that we've got, and that's going to affect our crop. You see that we have some sensor spots over here and down here on the floor of the studio, it was pretty much just filthy. So what I want to do is tighten things up on our subject. So I'm going to go ahead down here and just bring this in. And what I'm looking for is two things. I want to get tighter on our subject. I kind of want to put her eye right here on this rule of thirds. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. The other thing I'm doing is I'm getting rid of the floor because the floor, as you saw, had so many spots on them. It would have been an incredible amount of work to go ahead and try and clean all of that up. And none of the attention needs to be there. She's obviously jumping up in the air. We don't know how high she's jumping if we go ahead and crop it like this. So I think I'm going to stick with this crop. And I could probably go a bit tighter. Matter of fact, let's do that. And I'm putting this line just kind of right on her face and her eye there. And I want to give a little bit of room over here since she's facing that direction. It kind of gives her room to move in case she were heading that way. So this is the crop I'm going to stick with. And that's working for me. So we've, we've got much more attention on her now. Now, the next problem I see are these little sensor spots. I'm going to zoom in just a bit more so we have a easier time finding them. And there's a few ways we could handle this. The way I'm going to use is the erase tool, but we could also go to clone and stamp. So depending on your preference, really, I'm going to go ahead and here and select. And I can change my brush radius size. I want it to be a little bit larger than what I'm trying to stamp. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and look for all these little spots. I'm going to hold down my space key so I can get up to the top and see I have some spots there. And it's just basically scribbling over any place where you see that there may be a spot. And you're selecting all of them. If you decide that you don't want one, you can do two things. You can deselect. So we hit that and we can come over here and say, I don't want to do that one. Or you could clear the selection, which will clear everything. I'm going to go back to select. I don't want to clear everything and I want to select this one again because why not? And I'm just scanning the photo for a couple more spots. I think we've got some, yeah, right here and right down there, over here. And that looks good to me. So when you're done, if you've selected everything that you want to erase, come over here, press this little button called erase. And Luminar, you can see where it says applying a race. We'll go through and process all of those things. And then you wind up with a photograph that doesn't have those little dust spots on them anymore. Okay, I'm going to go back to fit the screen. And let's think about what we want to do next. We've done our composition. We've done a race. I'm looking for some color. And there's a color option right here. But that's not the one that I think that I want to use. I'm going to come over here to Pro. And I'm going to color harmony. And there's two things I want to do here. The first one is I want to add a little bit of brilliance. And you can see how that's affecting her skin tone. So let's just give a little turn this off and then turn it on. It adds some warmth to her skin tone. I'm not going to add warmth down here. Instead, I'm going to come down to color balance. And you can see that we can affect our shadows, our highlights, and our midtones. So I'm going to start with the shadows. And I'm thinking mostly of this background. I want to cool that off. So I'm going to add a little bit here and also up here in the science. And just, I kind of want to make that nice, cool background. And it also works 
with her jeans and her top. So it's, it's not selectively affecting the background. It's affecting it based upon where the shadows fall. I thought about the magenta and green. I don't think that's really going to help me with what I want to do here. I don't want to add either of those colors. So to get that out, I'm just going to double tap magenta green and move on. I think I'm going to move to my highlights next. I want to add a little bit of warmth. I, maybe a little bit of red, maybe not. I'm, going to, I'm actually going to take the red out. I'm just adding a little bit of yellow blue. Now we're going to come down here to our mid-tones. And this is where I want to warm things up again. And I'm going to play with what we do here. I'm, I'm really swinging for the fences with the mid-tones. And not that I plan on using that. I just wanted to see what the results were going to be. Okay, so let's turn this off and back on. And you see we've made quite a difference here. I think I'm going to look for more blue in this background. So let's go back to the shadows. And I'm going to pull down the cyan a little bit and just pull up a bit more blue. And that looks good. That's, that's where I want to work right now. The other thing we might want to do is take a look at her from a portrait perspective. So let's go ahead and click on the portrait tab. I want to add a little bit of light to her face, not too much. And I want to see if I can bring out the whites in her eyes. Normally, I would not use a lot of eye whitening, but I'd also normally be much closer in on someone's face. So let's go ahead and bring this up just to see if we can get the whites to show up a little bit. And I'm also going to enlarge her eyes, give that an opportunity. And I can see just a little bit in there. Next thing, I'm looking at her teeth, and I think I want to see if we can't bring up the teeth whitening a little bit. Again, because we're such a distance from her, I'm going to use a larger amount than I would normally would use because I need that in order to get her teeth to show up. And I think I'm going to bring a little saturation, well, actually more than a little saturation to her lips. And I'm kind of liking that so far. Let's go back over here to essentials. One of the other things I might want to play with is the contrast in the light tool. You see here, here where it says smart contrast? The nice thing about this contrast is that it does not affect color. Typically, when you apply contrast, it will also affect the color. But this one, you can ease off on the contrast or you can, you know, darken it even more. And it's not really affecting the color tone. So if you look at it here, like her skin, her blouse, the contrast is changing. The color really isn't changing. And I am typically someone who likes a bit more contrast. I'm looking at this line on her face. I don't think I really want that so much. I think in this case, I actually want to open up the contrast a little bit. If you work with highlights and shadows, you may not necessarily get what you're looking for with the um, contrast not affecting the colors. But let's take a look. Let's see what happens if we open up the highlights a bit. And maybe open up the shadows a bit. It's kind of faded. Let's bring the shadows back down. I'm going to leave the shadows where they were. And we're pretty close to where I want to be. So let's just go back and take a quick look. That's where we started. Kind of dull and flat, you know, obviously with those sensor spots in there. Now we've added some color and some color contrast with the background. The last thing I want to do is come down here to the vignette. I'm going to choose my subject and kind of place it right there on our thumb. And I'm going to pull this down so I can see where the vignette is. And decide what size I want it to be. I kind of want to keep it right there. The idea of pulling the vignette down is not that I want to leave these big black marks over here. That's something to taste. What I really want to do is kind of make it almost imperceptible, but still there to draw your eye into her. So if we turn the vignette off, so you can see this with the vignette off, we've got all this space over here, and there's nothing really con constraining your eye to keep it back in place. So if I turn this back on, it's not that perceptible, but it's enough to say, okay, look right in here. And that was just a quick edit from something that we took from kind of a boring environment. Let's take a look. So we took her from this way with this is a one light photograph, and that's why we've got the shadow over here. But it's kind of a boring environment. It doesn't really bring out her skin tone. And it, the environment in the photo doesn't really match the energy that she's bringing to the photograph. So that's why I wanted to do a little bit of uh, quick fixes here, enhance the colors, and just kind of bring out the photograph to match the attitude that she's giving us. I hope you enjoyed this. I mentioned earlier that we like to talk about visual storytelling on our podcast, and this is a good example of it. Sometimes visual storytelling isn't just with the shot that you take, it's also with the way you do your post-processing. And what we wanted to do is match 
the atmosphere and the energy that our subject is giving us and making sure the photograph represented that. So that meant a little bit of uh, digital enhancement with the colors. And that's really what this is about. It's not about documenting somebody. You know, if that's all we wanted to do, we would have just snapped a shot and left it alone. The idea was we wanted to enhance and share what she's feeling, what she's giving the camera in the post-processing. If you like this, that's great. Please go ahead, share it with a friend. I would also love it if you would click the like button. That tells YouTube if we're doing something right here or not. And if you really liked it, please go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have more subscribers in here so you can see the videos that we're coming up with. Click the bell notification icon. That'll let you know the next time we put a video out. We'll have much more to come on Luminar AI and some other tools that I've been working with. Thank you so much. We'll see you again next time.